think we all know something about the power that words have, right? How many, how many of you have lost a relationship in your life, personal, professional, romantic, because of you know, a difficult conversation or argument? Raise your hand. Yeah. How many people here have had a, a conversation, a difficult conversation with a friend, uh, a colleague, um, a loved one, where you had the opposite outcome? you were able, for whatever reason, to actually stay with it, to, to keep engaging, and you came out the other side. And not only that, but the relationship got stronger because of it. Raise your hand if, that, if you've experienced that. Right. So the question is, what makes the difference? Right. We have a disagreement. There's some hard feelings. There's intense energy and emotions. How come sometimes it all goes south? And other times, we're able to, to see it through. So what I've become interested in is what are the conditions that help us to have more meaningful, effective conversations? And how can we begin to influence those conditions in ourself and in the relationship so that we're more likely to be able to go in the direction of seeing those difficulties through, of really understanding each other? So there are three core trainings and three steps that I teach in the book, Say What You Mean. And the first and most fundamental foundation to meaningful conversations and effective communication is mindfulness. For the simple fact that we need to be here first to understand anything. Right? If we're not present, if we're not paying attention, right? If you're thinking about your shopping list or if you're looking at your phone right now, you're not understanding what I'm saying because, you, because your attention isn't connected with, with what I'm sharing. So the message isn't going to go in, right? Just, just think about how many arguments, how many misunderstandings we've each had simply because one person wasn't paying attention. Right? We just weren't listening. Our mind was somewhere else. So mindfulness lays the ground for connection and understanding. So the first step to having more effective and meaningful conversations is to do something that I call leading with presence. To lead with presence. And I like to use the word presence rather than mindfulness because mindfulness can tend to have a kind of intellectual... Um, heady connotation, right? Like I'm sort of up here somewhere looking down at everything. Right? I'm, I'm kind of disconnected and removed observing. Whereas for me, I don't know what it's like for you, but for me, when I hear that word presence, I, I go in and down. It's like I'm here. You know, I'm here in the room. I feel the stool underneath me. I can sense your presence in, in the space together. So it means not only that we're aware, but we really show up. And to lead with presence means that it's, what's, it's what comes first. Before any of the words, before our agenda, where we're trying to get to, what we hope's gonna happen, our emotions, what happened last time, before any of that, can we just show up? And that has a powerful effect. You know, we can feel it when someone's really here, right? You know when you're talking to someone and they're not paying attention, even if they're looking at you in the eye, kind of nodding, going, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, <laughs> right? Because we can feel it. We're, we're, we're very sensitive relational creatures. We pick up on those signals. So just that capacity to learn how to bring our mindfulness practice, this you know, strange thing that we do when we sit with our eyes closed and bring our attention inwards and really start to sh show up, to be more present and to feel what it's like to be alive. You know, Can we do that with another human being? There's great benefits to this. You know, we wake up to our life. When we're not aware, when we're not mindful, we're sleepwalking through our life. So bringing more presence to our life, to our relationships, our conversations has immense benefit. It gives us back our life. We get more information. When we're paying attention, when we're really here, 
we pick up on all kinds of cues and signals, not just the verbal information. It's not just that we don't miss things that somebody says, you know, but we notice what they're not saying, or we notice their body language more clearly, or we pick up on other subtle signals, or maybe we have an idea, or we notice a certain intuition or impulse in ourselves that we might have missed otherwise. So we get a lot more information when we lead with presence. Another one of the gifts or presence, uh, uh, gifts or um, benefits of leading with presence is that if we start to get reactive, right, if we start to get triggered, get angry, feel impatient, all of those kinds of energies which are totally natural point to something real and important for us but when acted on impulsively, tend to have negative effects that don't actually serve us. When we're present, we pick up on those signals more quickly and easily. We notice that impulse to snap or to say something harmful before it comes out. And we can actually contain it and make a choice. And this is one of the fundamental principles behind mindfulness practice in general, and particularly in communication practice, which is that the more aware we are, the more choice we have. Right? Would anyone disagree with that? It's completely obvious. Yeah? So we can train ourselves. We can train ourselves in this capacity. Some of the work that I've done over the years has been teaching mindfulness to youth and children. Uh, I taught mindfulness in the elementary schools uh, here in Oakland for a number of years. And um, one of my favorite quotes was from a, a young fifth grade boy talking about mindfulness practice. And he said uh, something to the effect of, you know, um, I like mindfulness practice because when I'm mad at my sister, I remember to take a mindful breath so I don't kick my sister. <laughs> right? So hopefully you're not kicking your coworker or your supervisor but we do that verbally, right? We give someone a little kick in the behind verbally, you know? And so when we're mindful, we feel that impulse and we say, okay, you know, Oren, wait, no, don't, don't say that. That's not going to be helpful. And we can allow that impulse to pass and understand the deeper message or need that's present. Maybe we do need to say something, but we can choose to say something that's going to be more skillful. I taught a retreat recently. One of the things that I do is I teach retreats on meditation and on communication around the country. And um, I taught a retreat recently in New Mexico, and there was um, an older gentleman who joined the retreat in his 70s, lives in Colorado, uh, kind of Midwestern cowboy type. And he was pretty quiet the whole week. You know, I could tell he was listening and taking things in, but he didn't say a lot in the group. And so I was kind of curious about him. You know, what's this guy's deal? And, how is he hearing some of this? Because, you know, we're talking about opening the heart and uh, understanding and um, being more authentic, you know, things that I might not associate with the kind of stereotypical perception of a Midwestern cowboy type, you know, 70-something-year-old white man, gray hair kind of thing. End of the retreat, closing circle. Everyone has a minute or two to just share something about what they learned or what was meaningful for them. So he gets the microphone and he says, I'm really grateful for having been here this week because I realized that my wife is the person I talk to the most and talk with the least. I'm going to change that when I go home. So this is the power of leading with presence. It means that we don't miss our life, particularly the people and the things that are important to us.